Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of AWS reInvent 2022. Lisa Martin here in Las Vegas with Dave Vellante. Dave, we've been here, this is our third day. We started Monday night. We've done well over 70 interviews so far. I've lost count. Yeah, I don't count anymore. <laughs> <laughs> just, just go with the flow. We've been talking all things cloud with AWS, its ecosystem of partners and customers. We're excited to do well welcome a couple of folks from Pluralsight to the program, talking about the state of cloud. Faye Ellis joins us, principal training architect at Cloud Guru, Pluralsight. Matthias Anderson is also here, principal developer advocate at Pluralsight. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having Thank us. Guys. Great to We're have really you. To Just in case, our audience isn't familiar with the Cloud Guru and Pluralsight. Faye, why don't you give us just that high-level elevator pitch? Yeah, well we basically help organizations transform their people so that they can deliver cloud transformations within their own organization. So it's all about upskilling and getting people cloud fluent and ready to rock cloud in their own organizations. Love that, cloud fluent. But yes, yeah. what are you hearing from the developer community or developer advocate? We've seen so much pivot towards the developers really influencing business decisions, business direction. What's the voice of the developer like these days? Well, I think that a lot of developers are recognizing that the cloud does offer a lot of value for the things that they're wanting to get done. Developers generally want to do things. They want to build things. They want stuff that they can look at and say, hey, I made that and it's really good and it solves problems. And so I'm hearing a lot of people talking about how uh, they value things like serverless uh, to be able to build those sorts of systems without a whole lot of other people necessarily needing to support them. They can get so much uh, built on their own even. Um, and then as teams, they can accomplish a lot of um, again, the same sorts of uh, projects, they can build those forward much more efficiently uh, as a smaller team than they could have in the past without that technology. So I'm hearing a lot about that, especially because I'm working with cloud so much is what I mean, right? So, so it's kind of putting the power back into their hands as developers, instead of having to wait for the infrastructure people or the support people to create a server so that they can deploy applications. There's a lot more tools to allow them to actually do that for themselves, isn't there? Absolutely, absolutely. It opens up so many doors. So pre-Ukraine, you know, we were writing about the skills shortage, and uh, you know, it, I call it the slingshot economy. Mm -hmm. Right? We all thought, oh wow, it's like all this is this talent war, and then all of a sudden, you know, Twitter layoffs, and there's this talent on the street now. It might not be a perfect match, but what are you seeing in terms of new talent coming on that you can train and coach? Where? How are you seeing the match and the alignment with what the demand for talent, and I know your philosophy is you should be producers of talent, not consumers of talent, I get yep. that. Yeah. But to produce talent, you've got to coach, train, you know, assist people. So what are you seeing today? What's the state of that sort of market? That's a really good question. I mean, we our, our state of cloud report, it says that 75% of tech, of tech leaders are building all their new products and features in the cloud. But what was the other stat, Matthias? Only 8% of the actual individuals that are working with the technology say that they have extensive skills with the cloud. So that's a huge gap between the, the people the who are wanting to build that forward as the leadership of the organization and the people that they have available, whether it's internal to their organization or external. So they do have a lot of people who are working in technology already in their organizations in general, um, but they do need to, to invest in that. Um, those technologists are learning things all the time, but are they maybe not learning the right things? Are they not learning them effectively? Are they not moving the organization forward? Yeah, so, so go ahead, please. I, like yeah, so we think it's all about like nurturing the talent that you have already in your own organization. And those are the people who really know your business. And you know, it all take, it takes time to kind of upskill and you know really, really develop those cloud skills and develop that experience. But you know, it's it's not always the, the right the right thing to take on new teams, like bring in new people and then you've got to get them up to speed with your own business. And actually, isn't it much more wonderful to, to be able to nurture the talent within your own organization and, and create that long-term relationship with your own employees? So where do you start? Like, with, to get to work for Amazon, you got to prove that you're you know, reasonably perfect. I mean, everybody, the whole company has to like spin up an EC2 instance and do something with it. 
Is that where you start? Is it sort of education on what's available? What's the cloud? Or is it you know, more advanced than that? You're looking for maybe people with a technical mind that you're, or do you have, you know, obviously at different levels, but take us through sort of the anatomy of when you experience. say where do you start, who are you meaning? Are you meaning an organization, an individual, a team? You guys, like, when you oh. bring on, you bring, begin to expose an individual to the cloud. Right. You know, yep. Their objective is to become proficient at something. Yep. Right. Right. And so, is it something that you, you know, have 100, 101, 201, yeah. basically. Well, you know what? If you want to learn how to swim, you got to jump in the water. That's what I always think. And like we fo we focus on practical skills. You know, the ability to to do something, to get something done, get something configured within the cloud. Uh, a lot of the time, our customers are asking us for um, skills that kind of go beyond certification. And for a really long time, we were, you know, a cloud guru has been famous for getting engineers certified. But that's just one piece of the puzzle, isn't it? You know, certification is wonderful, but it's that chicken and egg scenario that I think that you were alluding to, which is that you need experience to get experience. Right. So how are you going to get that experience? And we've got loads of different ideas to help people to actually do that. You know, on our platform, we've got lots of like practical exercises that you can do. You know, building out serverless websites, uh, configuring a web web application firewall, building a, a VPC. Um, we've got troubleshooting labs. We've got challenge labs, that kind of thing. And we've also got some free resources, haven't we, as well, Matthias? Like yeah. uh, things like our portfolio uh, cloud portfolio challenges, which are like little projects that you can complete all by yourself, you know, creating uh, serverless websites, uh, playing around with SageMaker, you get some requirements, and you have to design and, and, and actually build that. But it's, but it's all about getting that hands-on practice, and that's kind of what we focus on. And we start off with easy things, and then we kind of layer it up and layer it up, and we, uh, we kind of build, on, build on, the, on the easy foundations until, before you know it, you know, you're, you're cloud fluent. Yeah, uh, I think that there is a lot of value. You were mentioning, to just to circle back on certifications, um, that is a really valuable way for a lot of people to start, to take a look at the certifications that AWS offers, for example, and say, how can I use those to guide my learning? Because I know that sometimes people look at certifications as like a, a replacement for, for uh, some sort of an assessment or whatever. And it's not really that most of the time. Most of the time, um, the key value is that it guides people to learn a scope of material that is really valuable to them. And in particular, it uncovers blind spots for them. So to, to answer your question of like, where do you start as an individual, people often ask me, okay, so I know all these things, where, which certification should I get? And I say, the cloud practitioner is the place to start. And they're like, oh, but maybe that's too easy. And I say, maybe it is, but then it's going to be really quick for you. If it's not really quick for you, then it was really valuable. You learned those key things. And if it was really quick, well, you didn't spend a lot of time on it, and now you're just that much further along on the next certification that sort of guides you to the next larger scope. So it's a really valuable system that I often guide people to, to say that you can jump into that. Anyone actually can jump into the cloud practitioner and learn that. And we often and recommend that across an entire organization, yep. you could potentially have everyone uh, that gets that cloud practitioner, whether you're finance or sales or leadership executive, the individual teams in the yep. uh, in technology departments, of course, but um, everyone can get that cloud fluency and then they can communicate far more effectively with each other. So it's not just the technologists that are needing to do that. Absolutely, and I think also it's about leading by example. You know, if you're in leadership and you're asking your engineers to up skill themselves so that you can deliver your transformation goals, well actually it's, it's leadership responsibility to, to lead by example as well. And I heard a wonderful story from a customer just yesterday, a female CFO in her 70s, just got her cloud practitioner certification. Right I on. mean, that, that's wonderful. As I said before, a, a career in cloud is, is, is a, a commitment to learning, it's lifelong learning. So uh, yeah, that's wonderful, and long may it continue. I'd love to be in my 70s still, still learning new things and still like rocking it. Maybe not yeah. the CFO, maybe, <laughs> maybe something different, but yeah, that, that would be wonderful. How do you define cloud fluency? There's so many opportunities that you both talked about and you walked through really kind of the step-by-step -step process, but how, how would someone define themselves as cloud fluent? And how, it's almost like what you were talking about, Matthias, it's sort of the democratization of cloud fluency across an organization, but what does it actually look like? 
Wow, good question. Um, for me, I think it means everybody speaking the same language and having a common understanding. And I think that does kind of hark back to what you were saying before, Matthias, about um, like the foundational certifications, like the cloud practitioner type certification. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think a part of it is a mindset shift, that people need to understand a different way of thinking about technology, that cloud isn't just another tool, like just like all the others, it's a different way, a higher level of abstraction in technology that makes us more effective and efficient because of that, but because of that also, we need to think about it um, in, in not the same way as we were before. So, um, if you take it to the language analogy, instead of memorizing a few phrases like where is the bathroom or how much does that cost or whatever, um, you, you have an understanding of the flow of the language. You understand that, okay, there are verbs and nouns and I can put them together in this way. Oh, adjectives, those are kind of interesting. I can add those to things. And um, you have this model, mental model, for how you can interact with the technology just like you would interact with a language or whatever other thing. So the, the mental model actually I think is really the key thing that I keep coming back to a lot when people are learning um, that the mental model that you have for something is really what uh, dis sort of helps you understand the mastery of that. Um, it's whether your mental model is mature uh, and it's not changing a lot as you're learning new information, that's a really valuable milestone for someone to get to because as you're learning new things, otherwise you, you make assumptions and then you learn new things that challenge those assumptions and you have to change the mental model to move forward. So the fluency is when that mental model, you have the understanding and you can then communicate. Yep, love that. Last question for you guys as we have a, about a minute left. If you had a billboard that you could put anywhere about plural, uh, a cloud guru at Pluralsight and what you're enabling with respect to cloud fluency, I want you to each kind of take about 30 seconds to say, from your perspective, what would it say? Oh my goodness, I, I, I think it would say something like, you know, cloud is for everybody. It's no longer this elitist, difficult to understand, um, you know, abstract thing. And I think it's something that is inclusive to everybody and that we should all be embracing it. And if you, if you don't do it, you're going to be left behind because your competitors are going to be getting the advantages from cloud. You're going to miss that competitive advantage and you're going to lose out. So yeah, that's probably quite a lot to put on a billboard. <laughs> I love it. And Matthias, what would your billboard say? Ah, uh, let me think. Okay, uh, I might say something like, the future of technology is accessible and uh, important if you're in a technology career. Ah, oh, now it's getting more wordy. That's not quite right. But uh, the, the point is that um, the, the cloud really is the future of technology. It's not just some other little tool that's a fad or whatever. It's a different way of approaching technology. I'm, I'm realizing you're asking about the billboard as a short thing. The cloud is the future. You can do it. You should do it. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it, Faye Matthias. Thank you so much. For Thank you so me. much. This we was really a appreciate it. Great session. Thank you. Great to have a cloud guru of my plural site on the program. We appreciate you stopping by. Oh, well, thank, thank you, you so, much. so very Thank much. you. We appreciate Our your time. pleasure. Thank you. For our guests and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live enterprise and emerging tech coverage.